or Andrew Tessman. Yes, Kirk Buckner. Are you ever going to, you're never going to give me up? Never. I'm never going to let you down. You're never going to like, uh, like hurt me? I won't even run around or desert you. Thank you. And I'll, and I'll be pretty much just loyal. Like that's all you really had to do. Apparently that that's all he had to sort of like say this, that it's going to work. This is the most boring romantic song ever. But if you look at him at age 21, that kind of makes sense. Okay, so before we start- Why don't you tell people about what we're talking about? Yeah, well, we're- I we're, haven't figured it out. Yes, uh, well, because it's on the title. But yes, how the hell did this go number one? We're looking at uh, Andrea's pick this week, which was Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley in early 1988. Uh, before we look at before, uh, it's how, we, how we got here, can I sort of like tell you my early memories of this? Because I would have been in high school. And my memories of this in high school was, eh. It was a song that was everywhere, but I didn't hate the guy. I remember a lot of my friends saying, and I went to a predominantly white high school saying like when they first uh, heard this and they said, oh my God, I can't believe he's not black. Mm -hmm. from a teen point of view in the late 80s if you hadn't seen him you know what even now you show kids kids being like actual children yeah. or teenagers this that were you know post rick roll which we'll get into um <laughs> yeah. so it might not be in their overall consciousness if you were to show let them hear this song and then got them to describe what they think the singer looks like they're probably gonna say middle-aged black dude Exactly, because that's what he sounded like. And Rick, at this point in time, the way I remembered it was real big star, but not somebody that I really was inundated with because not a lot of the girls I remember were super into him, at least uh, in M.M. Robinson in Burlington, Ontario at that particular point in time. And, you know, you'd see the video. It's like, eh, all right, there it was. He just wasn't, he was just sort of there, but the song wasn't, but it, it didn't creep me out or, or sort of permeate my eardrums. Like a lot of people have said it, 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 it does. And reading some of the reviews on this, a lot of people consider this a terrible song. I don't consider this a great song, but this is not a piece of shit that people are saying it is, for some people. I, I totally concur. I don't think it's a bad song. It's not a good song. It's like a solid six. Out of 10, like about, about five, there. six, yeah, you know, average to slightly above average. This is a 1988 song. I call, I call this pretty woman soundtrack music. Exactly. It's, um, it is just a commercialized schlock mm -hmm. that is basically coming out of a factory. Yeah, that's exactly um, what this is. It is. Like if you, so he was signed by Stock Aitken Waterman. Yeah, but before that, you, you oh. saw like uh, he was uh, in a band, right? He was. Yeah. Uh, and he was the drummer that then took over for the lead singer when the lead mm -hmm. singer buggered off. Pilled, yeah. pulled a Phil Collins. <laughs> yeah, only I don't think the lead singer that that uh, Rick Astley replaced ever went on to be Peter Great Gabriel. Though. <laughs> oh, I didn't think so. Yeah. And I guess uh, not only one of the three, what's my notes here? Uh, so Waterman heard him. And mm -hmm. I would have to think it's like, this would be the perfect guy if he was 21 now. He would be in the voice. And then they would all sort of spin around and go like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Everybody would be hitting the button on him. Yeah. He's that generation's, not necessarily musically, but in terms of look and voice, that don't go together, Clay Aiken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they both sort of had that reddish type hair. They both kind of were, I don't want to say nerdy, but his, the way he looked then from a 2021 perspective is, but then I, then when I looked at some of the interviews, the one that we both shared with each other, uh, where the very young Kelly Ripa, just Rick Astley, Kelly Ripa interview, it's totally worth it. And holy shit, the hair. Rick Astley looks like the most normal person in the entire world. Yeah. 
and he just sounds like the most boring person in the entire world. You can tell he's just nervous as hell and doesn't yeah. know how to answer these questions from these weird teenage girls. Especially Kelly Ripa's question of, what did she say something about? Like, I know that they categorize teenagers into like groups of like skinheads or um, punks or and she listed off like three or four just like really negative, wrote that for her. negative connotations. And yeah, and somewhat well, yeah. But skinhead was a type of of skinheaded in early England, though had a different a different type of connotation. Absolutely, but yeah. still, it was a it was a pretty tone deaf question. Well, I'm sure someone wrote it for her, much like all her questions are today. And holy shit, Kelly Ripple looks fantastic, by the way. Like not then, not the teen version. I'm just saying. Yeah, right Kelly Ripple is like ageless. I would have to say, I would have to say so. I mean, her and Mark Consuelo, so they, whatever the, whatever they're sort of eating or drinking, I want that. It's probably fetuses, but maybe. Could be. It's a deal with no, the devil. That's probably it, Gwyneth Paltrow. No, I, I hate Gwyneth Paltrow. I can't stand it. All right. So well, back to the uh, subject at hand. So I read um, they signed him, but it was like a year before they even did anything with him. Yeah, so I guess they were just having their first actual success with um, You Spin Me Right Round. Yep. And, I didn't know that. Uh, so they kind of put him on the back burner and just mm -hmm. let him hang out and make them tea and sandwiches. Um, mm -hmm. Probably having him age a couple years wasn't the worst thing either. Well, he was apparently a very shy, nervous kid, which yeah. you can totally see. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a nerdy little white boy. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, but that's but who's got weird. a killer voice? Like absolutely. Yes. The the kind of like the um whatever the connection I make in my mind to a more contemporary singer is George Ezra. Mm. Also, young nerdy looking British guy that's got this deep baritone voice. Um, and I mean I haven't heard anything from him for a couple of years, but anyways, he's uh total dissonance between the look and the sound. Um, Whereas my so. singing voice is exactly what you think it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they put him on the back burner and just let him hang out and make tea and sandwiches. And then eventually, oh, they had him duet with um, some chick mm -hmm. that didn't work, didn't have any success. And then they threw this one at him. Well, I can't see him having a whole lot of chemistry with the duet, you know, and it's, and it's not that it's not for the Clay Aiken reason why that wouldn't work. It's just that he's not that type of person that you can sort of pair that off with. Uh, also too, I had my, in my notes, like this, this uh, group of producers, they, they were, they had their, the, by this point, as you, you were mentioning the word factory, that was really going through because Banana Rama was theirs and yep. they were on the top. Uh, I think they, had their second number one in the US at that point with Venus. Or, I mean, not Bananarama's first number one, but I believe uh, the Waterman Trio. Mm -hmm. So I, I might be off on that, but I, but I know Bananarama has been big in England anyway, since the, the mid eighties. So then they produce this album uh, with this lead single, which goes number one in England almost right away. But this is the, the part I love the most. Actually, no, let's, I, no, I don't want to get there yet because I, I was going to talk about the video. Uh, I think we should talk about the song itself. Uh, what works, what doesn't work. And for me, it, the voice, Rick Astley's got that voice that whoever's not giving him enough credit, they're, they're doing wrong. They're doing him so wrong. I mean, some of the reviews I read, like, like he just doesn't have the soul. And they meant the personality, I guess, to pull it off. Yeah, he, he does. It's this everything around him that... I think, I think that there's a, a disconnect between the music and his voice. I don't think his mm. voice is necessarily... Like, he does a great job of this song. I think he would be better served to be actually singing some soul or R&B or... He eventually did. He did, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he needs something a bit richer. Mm-hmm not synth pop dance tunes 
and this is almost synth pop R and B. I mean, like this is if, Mo, if Motown got washed out more and more. So I mean, even the rich strings were were synths to make it sound like like strings. Yep. And it's and it's not even that. It's it's like for 1988. This is what you're hearing on the radio. This it's it's not necessarily unique, but his voice grabs you because. Well, SAW had. 12 number one hits that all sounded exactly the same in three year in a three year time span. Yeah, in SAW, years. that's the trio. Of, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, Stock Ake and Waterman. Yeah, but 12 number ones in England. In the US, only um, three went number one. Really? I think I'm right. No, because there's Kylie Minogue. There's. Yeah, um, Kylie Minogue went, no, Kylie Minogue's big hits. Uh, were, they went up, they went to the top in England. They didn't necessarily uh, do that well. She didn't really break through to the States in, until much, much later. Really? I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. Because I know I know that with them, they had her do this horrible version of the one of the worst songs ever, Locomotion. Mm-hmm. Do the locomotion yeah. with me. Okay, no, you're right. I just looked it up. Only three number one US hits. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, um, yeah, they dominated. Still, they the just day. pumped out this synth pop. They were trying to be Motown, but not. So it's that's where you kind of get that watered down Motown feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it literally was an assembly line of. I swear, every song started with do 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 do. Yes. Like yeah, no, then that that's exactly what this was. So, but structurally. And in terms of production, this was perfect for what it was, but it was also, I think, one of the many types of songs that as we look at the overproduced and over, what's the word I'm looking for? The, where it became more about what you look like, which is also why Rick Astley sort of the fact that, I honestly think that that's why they wait, had to wait a little bit longer to look like a man. I don't know what he looked like he at 19. He still looks like he's 15. I guess I'm a little jaded because I remember when I was 15. <laughs> they look like a man to me. Oh, uh, he looks so yeah. young. And even now, if you see him in more recent stuff, he's still got a baby face. Yeah. No, I mean, Rick Astley, uh, he, he's uh, definitely someone I want to hang out with. Love to talk to him. Not about the Rick Roll thing. I've read enough about that shit. But then we get to the video which is utter shit. Uh, there's, there's no defending this at all. Uh, my understand. <laughs> this is about it. This is what he does. And then there's like two good dancers that are doing backflips and shit, but he's just doing this. Well, that's all he knows how to do. I mean, I-, I The white man shuffle. Well, no, the white man shuffle is this. Huh? 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 I'm sad I had to see that. So has been my wife at every wedding we've ever gone to. <laughs> but yeah, so, so the, my favorite part though, so they, they rushed this video because it already was a hit in England. So then they rush out a video and d- I'm sure you read this too, where Rick said he dressed himself. Yeah, he literally showed up to the shoot with a bag of clothes. Yes. So that was his trench coat. Mm-hmm. Apparently this trench coat got lost somehow yeah. at a concert. You heard that too? Or yeah, it yeah, got like ripped off of him and then just disappeared into the crowd. Yeah. And so this was his personal style, which again, maybe that's not the worst thing because he didn't eighties it up. So maybe it's just as well that he wasn't given sort of a glam squad. True. He did 80s it up though. I mean, no. those okay. those pleat front jeans with the denim te- the denim button up shirt. It's a, a he look. Could have had a mullet. Him. He could have had. He, there's a oh, lot of worse the, things the that he could have. The pompadour is never wrong. <laughs> I love the pompadour. I think I want to like bring back my pompadour. Maybe go I for can, it. I can. Start, We'd I, like to see that. I got. I still have the hair. I can still do hey. this. Petition any few listeners, watchers, people out there, uh, message us to tell Kirk he should uh, have yeah, a pompadour. The only one who has a fan though in this is you. It's not me. 
You never know. I'm pretty sure. I might be the one getting hate mail, but that's another story. And I so have back to um, the music video. Yeah, it's uh, it's just him doing this in various settings, maybe for, for three settings. and a half minutes, and um, well, you guys doing backflips. Well, the dumbest part too is like it looked like he was just he's doing the. So what, there is the one where he's just behind, at a wall, like one just to, in front of a green screen. And then the other one, he looks to be at a, a reception, like a, like a banquet hall. Yeah. Before people got in, like, was he auditioning to be the wedding singer? What the hell was this? I was thinking sound check because there's then yeah. the bartender that's like cleaning glasses and he's like, oh. And then he does like a split leap and a backflip over the bar and then starts grooving out like, well, he better, was he getting his overtime? Like, didn't they not prep all this? You don't need this type of prep. Like, you've, you've worked in, in banquets. I mean, it's it's certainly not necessary for that guy to have been there that early for, to show up for work. You never know. I mean, you gotta, it takes some time to set up a bar. This is also in the late 80s or really even up till recent times. Well, you know, if you're a white singer and then the black guy's dancing, well, then there you go. It's clearly black approved mm -hmm. so then there's the black guy dancing that is the bartender mm -hmm. and then there's also the whitest of white dudes dancing the guy with the like shaggy pseudo mullet and the jeans yeah. and the white shirt yeah that looks just like the blonde chick that's dancing but he actually dances better um but they could be the same person in drag it was well there was zero chemistry but between Rick and, any of these, and any of these women. I don't think that he has chemistry. I think he's just that quiet mm -hmm. sort of dude that just sort of ended up famous um, and then retired after four years because he just didn't want to deal with the industry anymore. Yeah. But he still was very, very famous for quite a long time. I misremembered a few things as we were sort of going back, because around this time, or a little bit later, uh, my musical taste had gone very, very much hard rock alternative uh, before alternative was really a thing. Uh, so I do remember his other hits from that album, because uh, he did have another, another number one off of this, uh, which I'm blanking on because I didn't really study it. Together forever. And, and, Together yeah. forever, yeah. yeah. All right, so, and it was essentially the same idea, video wise, but, Highly, but even song-wise, highly produced, uh, vague lyrics like, hey, we're going to stay together forever. And that's, that's it. You yeah, didn't... basically his, his sex appeal is faithfulness. Like, hey, baby, I, I might not be the sexiest dude out there, but I won't cheat on you. You know, that used to be my sort of line there, too. That really never worked. Because... <laughs> Really, people saw through that. I'll never cheat on you because I can't get anybody else. <laughs> That's kind of how that worked. But he, yeah, so he had two albums of slick production, okay songs, and then the music around him changed. But then he dumped those, the, the three producers, or they dumped him. Or it's an amicable, amicable split, which is more yeah, I think. I think he got out of the contract, but I think I don't think there was any hard feelings. I think he was just kind of at the end of. I don't know if it was so much a contract or just like, okay, well, here I'm signing a deal with this company, and here's the producers. Or did they have their own record label? I'm not even sure. I don't. I don't actually know. I, I have to question whether there's some type of animosity or just some type of self fulfillment, because the name of the third album was Free. And that's where that musical style completely changes to the music that he grew up with, that Northern soul say, song. I think he, um, he was happy to go back to what he wanted to be putting out as opposed to what was being spoon fed to him. Yeah, and the way, this is where, what I misremembered. I misremembered that, that being a complete flop, which it wasn't as I look back at the chart listings. Because I, I just remembered, and I, I talked to you about this off air last week, him on Arsenio Hall with the longer hair and just doing this adult contemporary ballad. I couldn't find the, the interview for that. And, and just the fans going, eh? 
the hell is this? Like it was, it was a flat reaction. And Arsenio was pretty much saying, uh, this is the way I remember it. I might be off on this, but it is, this is kind of a different sound for you. And I want to do like the big finger points because he had these giant ass fingers. Arsenio did. And you know what they say about guys with long fingers? Big gloves? Yeah. That's it. I mean, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I thought, at least the way I remembered it, which was wrong, was that this was a complete bomb, but it wasn't. I mean, he got hits on both sides of the pond, as they say, with that. But then music changed completely different after, after like 91, 92, once Nirvana hit, everything changed. And there wasn't any room for a white bread soul singer from England. There just wasn't. And he was fine with it, it sure seems like it, because he just happily retired, had one flop album that was a flop, his fourth album. And it's like, meh, all right, got my money. Yeah, I'm he said he, he retired to be a dad and spent 10 years raising his kid. Mm -hmm. And I, then came back out around, what, 2001, 2002, something like that? I... Not sure, but actually, you know, I can't believe I never even looked this up. Did he stay married? Is he still married to the same person? So they got married. Oh, God. They were together for like 14 years before they got married. So his songs were and true. And then they just got married in like a quiet little sort of way. I think they've been, mm -hmm. well, whatever time I saw, they'd been, they've been married for like 30 years. So, so yeah, lie. together forever. Never going to give you up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, Th that's awesome and then rick became a punchline and that's where things get interesting because i think you, you picked it or, and please tell me if i'm wrong on this because of the rick role the most enduring I mean, that was definitely part of it and you, we can't um, talk about the song without talking about the rick role that depending on who you believe originated from 4chan i guess that was before or they went all alt right well and that was what i was gonna say i'm like maybe before it was a nest of baby nazis um when it was about memes and jokes i think i don't know i've never i've never been on 4chan ever i have not either um, I, mean, I don't even quite know what it is it's like reddit um but for way way more controversial content so it's unpoliced reddit basically and then it's also i think most of the content um has time limits and disappears depending on the okay. um tastelessness of it so things that mm. are pornographic or whatever will disappear okay. much faster than things that are pg and it probably and all right wing it, is we got more, yeah as all about scrambling things. shit mm. to okay. not get in trouble but still put a lot of questionable content out there so the origins of this are apparently the duck rule. So someone put a filter or a something on 4chan that changed the word egg to duck. And it changed, that. it changed someone's content from someone's word from egg roll to duck roll. And so then someone created an image of a duck on wheels. And this started to be popping up everywhere and you know it would like that was being duck rolled was mm -hmm. suddenly this image would pop up in some content that you weren't expecting it in and then this turned into what were they saying it was something about somehow it morphed into they they were doing something and then just inserted never going to give you up into it because if we're looking at this then at 2006, which was the year that, from my research that, that it came up with, you're look, so now yet that song would have been 18 years old. Now in 2006, I mean, much like it is in 2021, music doesn't seem to have changed all that much. Uh, everything is sort of like either rap or some kind of, uh, at least on the top of the chart. So if you've got something that is soulless in a way from a guy who looks like kind of clownish from a 2006 of six eyes because mm -hmm. Rick Astley just he went away for as far as most people thought so like yeah. here's the joke this was almost the perfect punchline in a way 
there, yes. there's actually other songs. I came up with other songs this could have been. So, oh wait, oh yes, me too. But let's let's just <laughs> go back to the origins of this for a minute and right. then we'll Please, get yeah. into it. So yeah, so what it was was, so they, they were posting hyperlinks of like, check out this gorilla. And then it was a picture of the duck roll. So then um, I guess the Grand Theft Auto 4 trailer crashed whatever site was hosting it because it was just everybody wanted to see it so someone on 4chan created a a hyperlink that said oh here's the the gta 4 um trailer and it linked it to never going to give you up that's how i got that's that's how so they got that was the original rick roll Mm -hmm. and then it just morphed from there of being thrown into everything Mm -hmm. including um the macy's day parade well well, let's go to that the macy's day parade (laughs) he did it that was actually rick coming out yeah so so if we go back a little bit with the rick roll thing he um he acknowledged it was happening Mm -hmm. and he seems like just the most down-to-earth dude like he's just like well I had a 16 year old daughter at the time. Yep, yep. She sat me down and said, look, this isn't about you. This is about, it's a cheesy video from the eighties. Mm-hmm. And he got that. And he very much said, none of this, it's it's taken on a life of its own. It's not me, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not capitalizing on this. It's, it's an internet phenomenon that could be anybody, as you said. I think we should we'll, we'll list some other songs this could be in a i've moment. got a few all right well let's go with that what do you have i was gonna say things that we've even covered hey mickey that could have been well yeah. I, I i stuck with this this era okay so i have robbie robbie neville say la vie because mm-hmm. if i remember because he also had he had the michael bolton here if i remember right just and he had the, he had the white guy he was a better dancer but just another one-off. Yep. I tried to stick with something that, although as we discussed, Rick Astley's not a one-off, but a lot that song became so big, people remember him as a one-off, even though that's far from true. Yeah. Uh, I also got "Get Out of My Dreams," "Get Into My Car," "Billy Ocean." I thought that might have been a good one. Yep. Anything by Tiffany or Debbie Gibson would have worked. Those were those were on my list. I was also going with Wilson Phillips. Yep. I got two more. Uh, mm-hmm. Everybody Wang Chung tonight, but then it doesn't quite work because it, it's because they're, they're not doing the dance. But then I then I also had Warren's Cherry Pie because that's just a shit song. Hmm. Yeah, but, but maybe the, maybe the video is. Well, and you know what? It could honestly be almost anything. It, it could. Just I, pick a so cheesy many. video. Yeah, it could be that. It just happened to be this and it created this incredible phenomenon that lasted for a couple of years so yeah it, they um youtube yeah rick rolled everybody on april 1st where every oh, single every single video on their homepage linked to rick astley i didn't know that on april 1st 2008. okay um yeah, the, so he, he started out being like, no, it has nothing to do with me. It's got its own life. Mm-hmm. And then he did the Macy's Day Parade where mm-hmm. he was asked and got paid to come out on a, was it Teletoon or Cartoon Network float? Uh, I, I, you know what? I didn't even, I, I didn't even check what float it was. It sure looked like it could have been. It, it was a, it was, I think it was Cartoon Network yeah. for some show that I don't know because I don't have children and was not a child at that point um and yeah so that's pretty great um it's been in baseball games Mm -hmm. um and so like yeah major league sports events um and then they do all sorts of interesting things with print i saw one i got rickrolled once because the first letter of every line turned out to be never going to give you up (laughs) <laughs> on something that I was reading some stupid okay. paragraph and that was that someone put a lot of work into that hmm. um nice so a lot of people hate the Rick roll 
I think it's kind of funny. And honestly, I think that that I didn't used to think it was nearly as funny as I think it is now. And it's only moderately funny now. But I think it's something that's aged well because there's not a lot of good, wholesome internet fun. Especially nowadays. Yeah. It's it's wholesome. There's nothing wrong with this. At the worst, someone was sending around one that was a hyperlink that literally opened it up like on loop that you couldn't shut off without resetting your I, I, I did, yeah, hear about that. Apparently Emma, that happened to Emma Stone <laughs> in, in another <laughs> video that, that, we, that I guess we both have. Yeah, yeah. It, it's sort of funny. We, we uh, do our research independently. We always seem to come, come across the same shit, which is kind yeah. of neat. And sometimes we don't, and sometimes we send sometimes each other fun stuff the other one hasn't yeah. found, but. Yeah, yeah like, like I thought, hey, look at this gem. I already saw it. Nah. The, the one with uh, Kelly Ripa. The but, great thing yeah. about that Graham Norton clip is actually, it was just posted on my friend's timeline randomly three or four days. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, well, all right. After you decided to do this, this pick the song? Yeah, it literally like That's on, awesome. I saw it on Sunday, I think. Okay. So, yeah. And, um, and Rick, is, Rick is cool with it. He's probably made, well, not as much as I'm sure the producers have, but he's making more money people will want to interview apparently, him apparently i don't know but apparently he's made very little money off the rick roll because but well, no know, i'm just song, talking about the song coming back up i mean i'm sure that oh yeah. yeah um so he probably but see the thing is a lot of the stuff now is remakes of it and parodies mm -hmm. of it um he's only got performance credits on it he doesn't have any sort of writing credit it's still something it, oh, absolutely, it's something. Um, but it's minimal compared to what the producers are oh, getting off of this. Is, isn't it? Um, and there's some great parodies. The Wreck-It Ralph. Um, so at the end of Ralph Breaks the Internet, you know Wreck-It Ralph, the, yeah, the yeah. cartoon. So at the end of Ralph Breaks the Internet, at the very, very end, like after the credits. Oh, I didn't see this. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's Ralph standing in front of like mm -hmm. what looks like that performance hall or wedding hall or whatever that he's in in the video okay. singing. So it's- um, I didn't know that. Yeah, and he's he's doing the dance and singing. It's pretty great. Huh. Um, there is the Mad Men where they do the piecing together word by word of the cast mm -hmm. doing the song. That's pretty good. Um, and then my favorite, and I think your favorite, is Dave Grohl. Yep. Well, this, that wasn't a parody. It was just like in a no. Peter's concert. He had Rick Astley come out and sing the song, called him, introduce him as a badass motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Multiple oh, times. Yeah. I don't think Rick Astley's a badass motherfucker. No, I, I don't think there's anything. But you could that, see yeah. that Dave Grohl just has so much respect for him, which was great. And apparently that was impromptu. He didn't actually know he was going to be there. He just met him like an hour before. And they had very recently realized that these two songs fit mm -hmm. perfectly together. So when he saw him on the side of the stage, when he, like yeah. they were out and he saw him backstage at the side of the stage and he was literally, if you watch one of the videos, you can see Dave Grohl like putting his hand on his shoulder and be like, so like, this is going to sound like smells like teen spirit. Like you think we can do this? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nailed it. Uh, Rick Astley now is someone, I think uh, this is going to be the question I'm going to ask you at the end of every one of these, which is, do we want to have dinner with the, these people? And I would totally have person. dinner with Rick Astley. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's a definite yes. Uh, I'll, I'll close with this. And I think this sums up, the generation now perfectly i looked at all the comments on well, not all but i mean just a lot of the, the more recent comments on the the official video and it's a lot from people who just like finally actually watched the whole thing and it's like hey this isn't so bad and you know what that's a perfect summation of it this isn't so bad yeah i i very i would agree with that yeah but want to know what is what piece of steaming dog shit do you have for us next? Yeah, because that's that that's my expertise. But this is actually from a group. 
Actually, I got two ways I could go with this because I, I, I was going to go one way and then I thought I got something that's kind of worse, but I'm really tired of talking about race relations. Do we talk about race relations or do I get you to snap your fingers? Okay, snap your fingers. Okay, do it again. Jitterbug. Jitterbug. Uh-huh. <laughs> you put the boom boom into my heart. <laughs> bang, bang. Yeah, so we're gonna look at Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, a real piece of shit by an absolute legend, George Michael. And their first I'm looking forward one. to it. I, that, that song's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine, I gotta say. So you see their hit after for me is a guilty pleasure. Although it's guilty feet have got no rhythm. Ah, <laughs> goes ah, ah. Nice. And, I can, and I can repeat again, why Andrew Ridgely is my God. Have I not told you that? I don't think so. Yeah, well, next week you can find out why the greatest man in rock and roll history is Andrew Ridgely. All right, I look forward to it. All right, tune in next week. I can't snap my fingers, you can. Thanks, <laughs> choose life. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.